I'm Xin. Uh, so I'm really happy to go back to Yulin, Shanghai to give this speech to you. Yeah, and uh, as you can see on my title, I said that the virus is a death thing. So thanks for the second speaker, Professor Chen. He told us that what is life and using a central dogma to tell us to explain explain it very well. So now I'm going to tell you why I said the virus is a dead thing. As you can see that the virus is a, uh, simply speaking, the virus is a protein coat with the genetic material DNA or RNA in it. Um, so uh, we cannot define it as a life because although it has uh, the genetic material as all our living things have, it does not have a cell structure like us. So uh, that means it, the virus is not able to reproduce by itself and do any of the, rip, um, the chemical reaction, which is the metabolic reaction. So, but uh, as it, the virus has their own viral genetic code, they want this code to exist in the world. So uh, they develop a very special mechanism to pass their gene um, to the next generation. Um, so what's this mechanism? They enter our living cells, uh, such as our human cells, and use our own uh, reproductive factory to produce their own next generation, and at the same time kill our human cells. So that's why we said the virus is very clever, and we also call that virus is a borrowed life. So. Um, so, um, as we all know that uh, for the beginning when we know the presence of the virus, we were very scared about the virus because it is so small, we cannot touch it, see it, and at that time we have no medicine to cure any diseases that are caused by the virus. But with the fast development of technology, we are able to understand the features of the virus and also we developed a, a method to cure the viral diseases. In 1980, the WHO declared that our human beings successfully eradicated the smallpox virus. And at that time, all the humans thought that uh, we, the human beings, the most powerful living species in the world, must win the virus easily. But uh, for the, the next few decades, we suffer from the virus again and again. And it seems like the panic the virus brought us is far more than the biological disease itself. So what is exactly behind that, that frightens us so much? Uh, last month, I attended a technology summer camp and I studied the computational biology and bioinformatics there. And in one of the selective courses, uh, we discussed a few human existential risks in the future. And one day we played a game, and that's a very interesting game. So I believe after a 30 minutes break, and now it's time for a brainstorming session. Um, so the story starts in the 22nd century, about 100 years later. And at that time, we have a very uh, advanced biotechnology and synthetic, bio, uh, synthetic biology techniques. So today, the Professor Chen successfully uh, made the artificial red blood cell. And at that time, in the future, we're able to make anything we want. So create a, a totally new living thing or to change any living things we want. So at, um, in that time when the story begins, there's the end world war will start. Uh, and in this game, the 12, our 12 students are divided into four groups, and each group represented one country. So um, in this world war, we have a very special rule. Each country uh, in this world, no involvement of any human beings. Instead, each country needs to design one biological weapon to fight against the enemy countries. So, um, if you are the leader of this country, what do you want to design? 
and to, to use this biological weapon to help your country to win the war. And you can have a few seconds to think about it and share your idea with your friends later. Now I'm going to uh, share you uh, what our four groups design. And they, they're just uh, some, some, some ideas are pretty crazy, but I think it's uh, interesting to share you. And the first group uh, want to design a bomb, a biological bomb. A, but a, with, it's a very, very tiny one, so uh, it cannot be detected by any of the electronic microscope. And when this bomb touch your the enemies, it will quickly uh, make a large scale explosion. Boom, and the enemy will die. So that's the first group's design. And uh, this picture is a, a study uh, in, in Singapore, and they're currently uh, using, uh, developing some uh, suicide bombing bacteria to try to solve some biological thing, uh, biological problems. But in the future, of course, this uh, the biological weapon they design will be far more powerful than this. And the second group uh, wants to design a gigantic monster with countless legs and heads. Uh, I, I believe that they must be inspired from the film um, Godzilla, Godzilla and this is the um, horrible monster with three heads. Uh, it's called the King Ghidorah. Yep. And the third group, like the first group, they want to uh, create a very tiny little weapon just um, with the toxin. So uh, if this weapon enters the human bodies, uh, it will uh, immediately secrete the toxins into, into the enemy's body and uh, the enemy will die in just a few seconds. Do you think that it's very similar to what the virus and the bacteria look like? Yes, but in the future, when our technology is, uh, high, um, is powerful enough, um, they, this country are able to design as transmissible uh, and lethal as possible. Um, so um, I believe that the third group's design can kill many of the enemies. And for the last one, uh, I think you must be curious about what the last group designed, but uh, now I would like to just leave it and um, later I'll come back to it. So um, the, during that game, the, one of the biggest concerns I got is for this biological weapons we created, created by our human beings, are we able to control them? It's like a very similar question um, nowadays many people are concerned about. Are we able to control the artificial intelligence? But for the living things, I think it's a um, much more horrible things to think because I um, just with my biology knowledge, I think the living things has a higher uh, possibility to get out of the control of the human beings because the living things have their own uh, consciousness. They are able to reproduce and they are able to. Um, do what thing they want, and the mutation is very likely to happen in a living thing's body. So that's why I said um, in the future maybe we need to concern more about the biology things. And so uh, I know that it's just a game, and uh, it just will happen in the future, may or may be happening in the future. Or maybe it's even just a story in a science, science fiction movie, so it will not happen. Um, but um, when we go back from the future world to the more realistic view now, um, it's a, uh, the question is, uh, can we control ourselves? So, uh, so uh, as the as a science student, I believe that technology is uh, used to make the world better. But, um, but do you think that uh, all the people can 
uh, all the people are under the control to make to use the technology to make the world better. If there's someone that are doing some harmful things to us and they're losing the control. So actually, um, during the first few months of the COVID-19 pandemic, there's a rumor in all uh, across the world um, saying that the COVID-19 virus is actually a, an artificial virus. And they are just uh, accidentally released from the biology lab. So that caused this pandemic. So do you think this is true? Or, or it's just a rumor? So no, with my biology knowledge, I think uh, it's more reasonable to say that the virus is a naturally occurred thing. Um, but if so, there's it's truly someone and using the virus to do something harmful to our world. And actually, there's a virus called H5N1 virus. And maybe you know it, or maybe you know something similar to it, the H1N1 virus. Yes, this is a bird flu virus, uh, which means that it's usually spread in, among the birds. And not uh, the human beings will not be infected uh, unless they are, have the direct contact to the birds or they are staying in a contaminated environment. So that means this is not harmful to, uh, not really harmful to a human beings. But um, in 2000 and 2011, yeah, there's an experiment in the US. They want to use the H5N1 virus to, um, they want to change some features of this virus and to make it more transmissible among the human beings. Although this experiment was banned in 2014, it was restarted, yeah, it was permitted to continue by the National Institute of Health last year. So um, this virus, uh, currently this virus can be successfully trans transmitted among ferrets. So what is the ferrets? Um, I I'll just tell you the ferret is a mammal and human is also a mammal. So it somehow it, this study shows that this newly made virus is very likely to transmit it among human beings. So uh, that's a very horrible thing to happen. And uh, let's see, let's say what the, what, what the this researchers of this study declared. They said that we're doing this study because we want to have a better understanding of the virus and be prepared for the virus if one day this, uh, this blood, flu, blood flu virus really mutates and become transmitted in, among humans. So this is what they say. And I believe that the technology, uh, all the technology and science, we, we want to do the good thing. But if um, uh, there's one person among so many experts using this good technology to do something bad, and I believe that this breaking news, you, many of you or even all of you have heard about it. Um, the, the first, the world's first genetically edited baby in 2018, um, made by He Jianhui using the CRISPR-Cas9 technology. Yes. Um, to honestly, the, tech, um, the CRISPR technology is the best genetic editing uh, technology now in the whole world. But it's, um, it still needs years or even decades of time to be uh, developed and then they can be safe enough to use it among humans. So, but um, this is a knowledge that as a high school student at that time, we I know that, and I'm very clear about the potential, huge potential risks of using this genetic editing technology on human. But it truly happened. Uh, he uh, let, brought this birth of this baby to the world, and no one knew the destiny of these twins. And and we hope that these things won't happen again in the future. So uh, we'll go back to the question I asked at the beginning of the speech. 
what really, behind the virus, what really frightens us, brought a panic to us. Um, is it the tricky virus itself, or the H5N1 virus, or the biological weapons we design, or even the genetically additive babies? So I believe that you have your answers in your mind. And then this, at this point, I do not want to um, talk about any serious and heavy topic anymore. So let's go back to the game. Um, let's go back to this virtual future world again. And um, now I will tell you that what is the last group design. So um, at, uh, before I tell you this result, um, can you guess which group won in the end of the game? There's four groups. Yeah, as the common logic of telling a story, the last group won. Yeah. Um, yeah, the last group win. And I'm very proud that the last group is my group. Uh, we designed the, the things that win this world. So actually, um, after we heard the rule of this game, uh, we, have, uh, we had no idea about which, what things we can design, what things we can create as a weapon to fight in this war. Um, the thing is, we don't know the me uh, we didn't know the meaning of this word. Why we need to design so, uh, so, so many fresh lives and fight against each other? To but but it's actually a war between human beings. So at last, we decided not to uh, make a offensive weapon uh, to involve this word. Instead, we want to create a barrier, a biological barrier um, above our country to protect our country. Just like what Wakanda did. Um, yeah, I think if you have watched uh, The Avengers, you must know what is Wakanda. And so uh, we want to make this barrier to protect our, uh, our people in our country as well as all the living things in our country. And all we want is very simple. We just want um, the world, or at least our country, as peaceful and full of love. So, yes, yeah, thank you.